Let's make all of this a lot wider. And as you can see, things are an awful lot wider and it didn't cost an arm and a leg like those expensive full frame lenses. If there's one thing on the Sony ZV-E1 that a lot of people will question, it's the stabilization. Except, right now, you're looking at a 20mm Sony G lens, and it is on active stabilization. So this is kind of what it looks like, and I'm walking on a really, yeah, stereotypical Irish surface. But, what if there was a way to get even better stabilization. Well, there isn't a Sony ZV-E1, but it comes at a huge cost. And that is dynamic stabilization, which crops in quite a bit. As you can see, it is pretty substantial. Now the stabilization is a lot better. And again, keep in mind, this is a really wide full frame lens. This is the Sony 20 mm lens. But what if we could do this and you would get a wider shot same stabilization, just as good because the dynamic stabilization is insane and it wouldn't cost you a bomb. Because if you were to go for a wider full frame lens, like we say the Sony 16 to 35, you can get the F4 for like 1500 bucks, the G Master is like nearly three grand. What if you could do it for less than 500 bucks? For you guys to really appreciate this, right? I've got the Sony ZV-1 back there. That's the Sony G lens. That's the 20 mil lens. And this is as wide as it goes. Now keep in mind, right? I've got dynamic stabilization on here, which is that huge crop. And that gives really good stabilization. But before we see how it moves, let's just click my fingers and let's make all of this a lot wider for less than 500 bucks. And as you can see, things are an awful lot wider and it didn't cost an arm and a leg like those expensive full frame lenses. So, firstly, before we get into what I've done, how does this actually work with dynamic stabilization? Because while, yeah, this is a static shot, we want to see movement, especially on this surface of the moon. And this is how it all looks. Look at the stabilization on this, and it all costs less than 500 bucks. In fact, I guarantee you what I've done, if you've been making YouTube content for any kind of period of time, there's a really good chance you actually have this lens in your bag. And I'm talking about the Sigma 16mm 1.4, which is an actual APS-C lens. It's cheap, it's like 500 bucks and less. It's cheap and it works amazingly well with the Sony ZV-E1, but how is an APS-C lens working on a full frame camera? Where's the vignetting? Where's the fucking sun? Well, in fact, the vignetting is still there. You can see it. Ha! <laughs> Pain in the butt. And this is just the normal standard stabilization on the Sony ZV-E1. So this is unusable. And if we put on the active stabilization, you can kind of see it around the corners and active stabilization on this sensor is good, but it's nowhere near as good as the dynamic stabilization, which in a lot of cases is nearly, oh, it's nearly gimbal-like. And this is the dynamic stabilization. I am walking on the worst possible ground. The camera is literally at arm's length. It is super, super wide. Yes, we have that crop, but because this is an APS-C lens and APS-C lenses will work in full frame cameras and they'll kind of work with the crop, it's a lot better than the Sony 20mm lens. This is the thing that kind of blew my mind. So yes, you can spend thousands on a really wide angle lens, full frame lens for that full frame look, but you can spend a lot less. And I mean, okay, let's just jump back to the Sony one really, really quickly so you guys can see how much of a crop the dynamic stabilization puts in. See, and here we are, dynamic stabilization. Yes, it's a full frame lens. Yes, the stabilization is still really good, but it's just not as wide at all. Now, I know what you're saying, right? You're like, Vic, I've got this 11mm lens, or what about that Sony APS-C 10 to 18? That might well work, but here's the thing. I reckon, and I don't have anything wider than a 16mm lens, I reckon the 16mm is probably at the upper limits of the crop. So anything underneath 16mm, 
you probably are going to get that vignetting and yes I know you could crop in but that's going to defeat the purpose of this wide angle now settings for me right now and I say this for everyone who's starting out or if you're just doing a quick vlog look at this fog ah <sighs> yeah this isn't weather seal <laughs> Settings, what this is on right now. Shutter priority, that's it. The whole camera is on shutter priority. The ISO is on auto right now. It's ISO 100, so it's really low, so there's zero noise. And it's one over 50 is the actual shutter speed. So the camera is running a lot of things and the autofocus, the autofocus in Sony's Kaiju. <laughs> there's some freaking weird sounds down here. For me, the autofocus is that's a plane, right? Yeah, that, that's that's a plane. <clears throat> you better get clean underwear. <sighs> right, anyway, okay. So, autofocus seems to be absolutely insane. And this is the Sigma lens again. This probably, right now, is going to be my go-to lens. It's an APS-C lens on a full-frame camera. But with this dynamic stabilization works. However, I did the other day, right? And if you stay this long in a video, right? You're gonna hear this before anybody else. I did sign an NDA, right? So meaning I can't tell anybody anything about what's being sent to me, but I'm being sent something that could be even better than what this is right now. If you wanna see what that's gonna be in the next couple of weeks, make sure you hit subscribe because I've got a ton more ZVE1 footage and videos coming. Now, just on that, if you want to learn stuff about filmmaking and editing and video, it's not all going to be about the Sony ZV-E1. We're going to use this as our example. So if you want to up your game, this is where it's at. Oh, extra content, extra content. Okay, right, I got to kind of just jump in here a little bit. And by the way, this is the Sony ZV-E10 and I'm still on the Sigma 16mm 1.4. Okay. Uh, looking at the footage, and just to jump in here, there definitely is room for improvement, I think. It's probably not perfect. Those micro jitters are quite apparent. Now, all that said, I was walking on a beach, really, it's even a beach, really stony kind of ground. So probably not the best example for any piece of stabilization, whether it's full frame or APS-C. Look at the state of this place. There, 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 like, ugh. Anyway, right, so I'm just kind of here to just make the point that it may not be perfect, right? And obviously for a lot of folks, myself included, the Sony ZV-E10 is quite an expensive camera to buy and you don't really want to be adding a lens. Potentially that's going to cost nearly as much or as more than the camera. So a lot of us have this particular lens lying around the place and it does seem to work on kind of more just kind of walk and talk on, on, on a solid surface, as you can see that I'm kind of walking around my own little studio here. It uh, seems to be kind of, you know, a lot better, okay? Where it's sudden kind of jitters are not as bad as, as they were on that horrible stony beach. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind now, just before everyone starts losing their mind in the comments, I just want to kind of bring it all back here and go, this is absolutely an option to have. Is it the best option? No, but for those of us who want to save a few bucks, it could well be a compromise, I feel anyway, that is definitely worth kind of thinking about because 